My favorite recipe involving braising is number one, asabuco. People always ask what's my favorite thing to cook. I love cooking asabuco. I love how it smells in your house. I love how it eats, you know, everything about it. And then of course, braising baby back ribs to make some amazing barbecue ribs. Fantastic. to have so much fun today this is okay I always say this but I, I love food and I love great ingredients and we have some great partners we have some amazing partners that have shared their passion and we're gonna have a gentleman on today he's gonna share his passion with what he's doing it's a really cool story we'll get to that a little bit later in the show but we're gonna get started first um, it's about braising and braising is cooking meats and some of these meats are a little tougher they're not you're not going to braise um, a beef fillet or maybe uh, a ribeye or even a New York strip loin, but this is some great cuts. Right now, we have a beautiful cut here. This is a blade roast, and this roast is fantastic. Um, not only is it great for roasting, we're going to pull it apart to make a sandwich with. It's very good in, in a pulled beef type setting, or if you want, you can grab the blade roast, get your local butcher to grind it for you, it makes so much amazing ground beef and hamburgers. You gotta check this out. And then over here we have a pork butt roast. Again, these are all from Nutra Farms. And just wanna kinda of go back to the beef for a second. It is a grass raised beef. So very healthy. It's gonna have a little smaller uh, fat cap on it. Um, absolutely fantastic. And then we have a pasture raised pork. And this is a pork butt roast. And this is the roast that you want to do if you're going to do um, maybe a pulled pork and you can smoke it and do everything that way with it. We're going to do something totally different because that's who I am and that's why I like rolling. We have some amazing stewing beef from Nutri Farms, again, grass raised. And then we're going to finish it all up with some baby back ribs. Okay, you can do side ribs. And I know some people really like side ribs. No, don't like it. Um, we're going to do the back rib. Love the baby back rib. It's lots of meat. It's tender. It's great. It's flavorful. And away we go. So we got to get started. And I'm just going to season everything with just a little bit of salt and pepper. As I mentioned earlier, because this is going to take between anywhere from two to 24 hours, depends on how you want to go with this. We're gonna use dried herbs so that they reconstitute and give all that great flavor. So this is just a little bit of dried garlic. If you're keeping track, it's probably about one teaspoon. A little bit more on the pork. And then of course the ribs, get a light dusting. Then we're gonna take some dried onions, and these are just dried onion flakes. You can buy them at any grocery store. I usually buy the big container because I go through so many of them. And we're gonna just cover the roast in onion because onions, roast beef, mm. And then on, onto our baby back ribs. And then with the baby back ribs, we're gonna start it. Now, again, if you want, you can smoke these beforehand, smoke them for about an hour, and then, you know, braise them in the braising liquid, then finish them down the road in, in the oven, um, or just finish it all smoking them and, and do it that way too. There's so many different ways of doing this, you know, tailor it to the way that you like it. Recipes are like roadmaps, there's four different ways to get there. So we're gonna take some of uh, flippin' smoke sauce, and. Okay, I'm not gonna share any of this because I, I'll let him share the story. So we're gonna put a little bit of sauce over top of our ribs. And just kind of let that marinate in and do its thing and have some fun. You can tell this is one of my faves, Okay. <laughs> okay, so now, we're gonna take a little bit of salted caramel from our good friends at Waterloo Brewery. 
We're gonna put that in with our pork roast. One whole can. And this has like a coffee and chocolate flavor. It's just gonna be so good. We're gonna take the ribs up another notch too. But we better taste it first. I am so gonna get emails about that. We're gonna put the um, beer over the ribs underneath. And then for the beef, we're gonna do a little bit of a combination. A little bit of dark. And I happen to have some red wine in the back here. We're going to put the roast in the oven on a convection roast setting at 350 degrees. Now I'm going to roast them on that setting for about an hour. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn the roast over and we're going to put some uh, foil over top of it and then let it reduce the heat down to about 250 degrees and then let it slowly braise over about um, six to eight hours. Depends on how tender you would like it. I like it to fall apart. So in it goes, we're going to take one at a time. I tried to do two ones and I dropped them, so I don't want to do that again. In our beautiful decor ovens, do a quick little shout out to our good friends at Goldman's who have arranged for us to have these ovens. They're absolutely fantastic. Like I said, 350 convection roast. We're gonna do it for about an hour, and then we're gonna turn it down to 250, cover it with some foil, and away we go. Now, for the ribs, we're gonna roast them for um, two to three hours. You want them to be, a, not to fall apart off, just so they kind of have that easier pull, and then we're gonna marinate it some more, let it sit for 24 hours, and then finish them on the barbecue, or if you don't have the barbecue and it's winter and you're doing it in your house, you can finish them in the oven or even a, a, um, a slow cooker for that matter. Well, our ribs, our pork roast and our blade roast are cooking, I thought we'd do some other braising technique, a little bit different. Uh, we're going to do a traditional my mom stew and we're gonna do a, a Cuban stew that we, we got introduced to when we went to Puerto Rico. So uh, we're gonna get started. I'm gonna warm our pans up. We'll, um, with, we have a little bit of butter in both and we're gonna cook one in the oven and the other one we're going to cook in the pressure cooker, which is really cool. And um, you just have to make sure you turn the right burners on, Jeff. <laughs> so we're going to warm our butter up. Well, the butter's warming because you want the pan to be hot. You, you don't want the pan to be cold. Again, we're frying. That's what we really want, sauteing. Um, so we're just going to cut our potato up. We're going to keep the skin on. And this is a rough set potato from, if you remember, our good friends at Gamox out in New Dundee get all my produce there. They still have potatoes, carrots, a whole bunch of different vegetables. Check them out. We're gonna use two potatoes. Again, if you wanna use more potatoes, you can. It's wherever you wanna go with that. It doesn't have to be a huge cut, you know. Um, that's, that's all good. So that's gonna go right into our Dutch oven. Again, if you don't have a Dutch oven, but you have a roasting pan, a Pyrex pan that's oven safe, you can put it all in there. We're gonna put our carrots in, our celery, our turnip, which is gonna give that, you know, you got sweetness and then you get the bitterness of the turnip, which makes it taste even better. A Little bit of salt and pepper. Now, I don't put as much salt and pepper in this at this point. I let it braise out, cook out, then I season it, and we can kind of see from there. 
As you can see, our butter's starting to warm up nice and hot in both pans. I'm gonna add in, I have some leeks here, and as I mentioned to you in other shows, um, I love using leeks, but if you don't have leeks, you can use white onions, red onions, wherever you wanna go with that. Again, get that pan nice and hot. And we do have some green peppers in. This would probably be the only time I ever use green peppers. I like them in this stew. I guess it's childhood memories that I truly like about it. And we're just gonna stir this together. And you just start seeing that, you know, our butter is starting to melt in our pressure cooker as well. Put that out for now. We'll take some of our beef. Kind of split it be between both. And we're gonna add our beef in. Just hear that sizzle, that's what we're looking for. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna brown our beef off here. Again, we put the salt and pepper in um, our vegetables already, but for the beef stew, I love Montreal steak seasoning on everything <laughs> but on my steaks. So this makes the stew just take it to a whole nother level. So we're gonna add a good tablespoon of the Montreal steak seasoning onto our stewing beef. We're gonna add a little bit of garlic. Again, these are all dried, because don't forget this is gonna take some time to cook, so you want it to all reconstitute and give it all that great, amazing flavor again. So we're just gonna give it a quick stir. While it's brown, you can just start seeing the meat start to brown up nicely. We're gonna stir in our, this is kinda of like our Cuban recipe. So now we're gonna take one, um, two tablespoons of garlic, some dried onion, about a good quarter cup of that. I'm gonna put a little bit of dried onion in our regular stew as well. Probably about a good half cup. And just you're probably noticing those thing, we do have a mirepoix blend, so we have some onion, carrots, and celery. We're just gonna put that all in as well as what we have in our regular roasting, our Dutch oven, sorry. Finishing that up. Now, I have two limes. We're gonna take the juice of two limes in our Cuban stew. Have I mentioned how much I love filming this here at the studio kitchen? Everything's right at my hands. It's absolutely fantastic. That was a juicy line. <laughs> Again, if you're looking for a lime or lemon ju juicer, our good friends at Stop Restaurant Supplies have them all. Just ask if you want the one from Chef D. Again, that beautiful smell. You know, I mentioned basil a lot, but lime also invites you to the table to, you know, it just that beautiful aroma that you get from the juice. It's absolutely fantastic. So we're finishing up browning up our meats. And then what we're going to do, we're gonna take our pan. Oh yeah. Get it all nice and cleaned out. Kind of mix it all together. And I'm just gonna bring it back on. I know it's a little bit warm, that's, what, that's all good. What we're gonna add to it now is we're gonna add some of the beef stock that we made, you know, from the bones that you all saw that has all that great gelatin in. That's gonna help thicken it up. 
little bit of vegetable stock. Again, if you don't have vegetable stock at home that you made, there's some great, great options at your local grocery store. So we're gonna cover this. We're gonna take this. We're gonna place it in the oven, 350 degrees. And it goes, you don't have to look at it now for another two hours. It's gonna do its thing, the meat's gonna tender, the vegetables are gonna cook, your whole house is gonna smell absolutely fantastic. Finish browning our beef here that has some onion, some garlic, some cardamom. We're gonna add in our leeks, our mirepoix blend, And then of course, some red onion and green onion. Now we don't have to sweat the onions and vegetables off like we normally would if you're doing it in an, a roasting pan because we're gonna do it in the convection, sorry, in the uh, pressure cooker. We're gonna add some tomato sauce, some strained tomatoes. We're gonna add in our beef stock. Because we have it, I'm just going to add a little bit of Montreal steak spice. Touch of salt. We're going to grab our lid. We're going to let that come up to temperature. Our safety valve is going to come up. It's going to let us know we have enough steam going on. We'll move it over. We'll let it um, the heat go down and then we're going to keep it in the pressure cooker for about an hour and a quarter and your whole house is going to smell great it's going to be some amazing eating and let's let everything else cook I know, I know, I know, I say this a lot, smell a vision we're working on it, 2019, it might happen. So all the meats are done. We have our ribs, we have our pork, we have our beef, we have our Cuban stew. I have my good buddy, Chris Flippin from Flippin Barbecue Sauces, um, and we'll get to that in just a second, but I think sure. you should try the Cuban stew because it's been going and being absolutely fantastic. And here you go. I can smell that all the way across the yard. It's our neighbor, he's been on every show. We gotta stop turning the fan off earlier. Um, okay, well, we're waiting for that. I'll give you some of our beef stew for you to try. As you can just see, it just, it, it takes time, um, but it's absolutely fantastic. And of course, with the magic of TV, this is, you know, a two to three hour process. You can just see all that great. I know it's gonna be really hot. Your sauce. Yeah. The story behind it. How did you come up with this? Because I gotta tell you, he smokes all the onions, all the tomatoes to this day. Yeah. Yeah. So basically I was in uh, corporate sales for mm -hmm. the last eight years or so. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we just hit a year this year of having the sauce out. I, uh, I was just tired of the travel and had yep. some, you know, personal things going on and, and just decided, you know, let me uh, try something different and get something out on the market that's that's not out there. So, so no, have you made, were you making sauces like in, in or never. this is just, okay. never have before. So how did this no. come about? <laughs> no culinary experience okay. whatsoever, just loved, you know, had a passion for smoking meats and, mm -hmm. and uh, barbecuing and things like that. Didn't want to come out with a barbecue sauce. I wanted to come out with you know, a sauce that has some versatility, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to, to use on many different things. So it's, uh, you know, just kind of started out of the garage, no labels, some jars and uh, put something together. And here we are. So like I said, we're in about 170 stores now, about yep. 50, 50 local stores, which is amazing here in KW. The support's been Awesome, you've been awesome. I mean, it's just, it's fantastic. Yeah, I see Vincenzo's has it. I see our good friends, Charles Colney Meats yeah, have it. Yeah. Cottle's Catch has it. Yeah. Um, and a whole bunch of other places, but yeah. you know, those are four of my mainstays. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's a smoke sauce. So tell me a little bit how you, you know, I know there's some tomato, there's some heat to it, 
but you also really do truly smoke your onions and tomatoes, right? Yeah, I do. So I, uh, I have cast iron pans. I have a bunch of smokers and basically we get the produce uh, locally here in, in KW and get it uh, smoked cast iron. It takes me about three and a half days to do uh, a batch of sauce. So all the garlic, all the onion, the tomatoes all getting smoked. Uh, and uh, then we bottle it at uh, Rutham's Gourmet in, in Aberfoyle. Mm -hmm. So everything is 100% local and that's so <laughs> cool. It's just I just love that you took an idea that's kind of like a dream. Yeah. And I fast forward it and I, I know it takes time and I know there's I know there's pressures and everything behind sure. the scenes, yeah, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, but of course. You just you, you've really made it work. You've done you've done the leg work and I I remember I, I phoned him up and I said, Hey Chris, where are you? Oh, I'm up north at you know, settling into these stores and that, you know, and hats off to you. That's really, yeah, well, really I cool. Well I appreciate that. Coming from you it means a lot and uh yeah, I mean, you want something, just you got to go get it. So everything, uh, everything out there looks, you know, looks perfect. But, you know, like you said, there is a there's a struggle there. But hey, you know, without the support of KW and everybody else, it's mm -hmm. it's been fantastic. So so you're trying some yes, of the stew. Yes, I am. So then what I've done here is I've just taken a little focaccia bun. I smothered it with the sauce because that's just going to make it taste amazing. We have some Nutrifarms um, pork butt roast. It's it's just fantastic. I'll give you a little sandwich there. I'm going to keep a little bit back for me. We have our ribs done now. That and like I said to you, you know, there's times where, yes, you, you, you want to do it around your barbecue. I love doing it on our Crown Verity wood grill. It, they just taste amazing. But there's some of you that live in a condo. So don't be scared that you, you cannot not do it there. Do it in the oven, roast it, slowly braise it. You put some moisture in with it. It's really, really tender. And then of course we got our beautiful, I'm just gonna put this here for now so I don't forget about it. Then we have our, our chuck roast or our blade roast. You might notice there's a little piece off. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, quality control, right? So again, we're just gonna cut that. And this is really great because you can go with, especially with this, this cut, a blade roast is you can go, I'm just gonna give you a little piece right now for you to try before we, we put anything on it. Yeah. Again, no, moist, and nice and moist because you got the fat throughout it, which is really great. But also, it does. You can go like even farther, so you can just it just falls apart and mm -hmm. pulls apart, or you can do it like so. And this makes a great sandwich. Now, I've taken out of the package, but I have the new Bothwell 548, and 548 means that it's been aged at least 545 days or 548 days. And then it's just, okay, you gotta try this cheese. This is absolutely fantastic. Great people out of Winnipeg. Fantastic, wow. right? Yeah. So then we're gonna take a little bit more of your, your sauce, your smoke sauce. And as you were mentioning before, you do smoke your own tomatoes, onions and garlic, if yeah. I got that right, correct? Yeah. We're gonna put our beef on here. Now we're gonna grab our cheese. I'm really surprised our neighbor has come back yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so we're going to cut this and make sure we put the cheese in there. You try that, see what you get. We'll make a mess here. Again, so locally you can get your sauce at Vincenzo's, uh, Charles Quality Meats, Vin, um, Coddles, yeah. and a whole bunch of other places. Yeah, right? the best place to, to check for it is on, uh, on the website at uh, flippins.com. Okay. Yeah. Hey, thanks for doing and living your dream. I know you want to eat this, but yeah. thanks for being on. I really appreciate it. Hey, Good thank to you, see you guys. again. Hey, get in there. Yeah, thank you. And thank uh, you. I'm going to eat. We're going to taste everything. Till next time, won't you join me here at the studio kitchen out here in Post Lunch? I'm Chef Dean.
Join us if you're able. We'll be at the kitchen table, cooking, cooking with Chef Dean.